Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today I thought we'd do something different. This should become a new series on my channel if you guys like it. Basically I found an old fairy tale book of my mom and I thought I'd tell you a story each time and make an artwork to it. And today's story is the three sisters and their glass hearts. There were once a king and a queen who had three beautiful daughters and the organism of these three princesses was remarkable for their each being furnished with a heart of glass. Children, children, said the queen when the princesses were still small. Whatever you do, take care of your hearts, for they are a fragile make. The children therefore tried to be very careful and for some time all went well and their hearts remained unbroken. But one day the eldest girl, who was leaning out of the window, looking down into the garden below, noticed a little bee which was buzzing busily around the flowers. The little creature interested her so much that she leaned out further so as to be able to watch it more closely, when suddenly, smash, there was a sound of broken glass. The young princess had crushed her heart against the window sill, and so, alas, the poor girl expired. After this exceedingly sad accident, the two other sisters were even more careful about their hearts. Sometime after the death of the princess, the second daughter, very thoughtless, drank a cup of hot coffee. And when she had finished it, something was suddenly heard to crack, and she fell back, fainting into an armchair. The sound on this occasion, however, was not so loud as the first. The queen rushed to where the princess lay and, in examining her, found, to her great delight, that the heart was only slightly cracked and not broken, and that her daughter was still alive. What are we to do with our daughter? said the king to the queen. For although the injury to her heart amounts only to a crack at present, this may increase to a decided fracture. But the princess begged them not to worry themselves about her. For you know, said she, it's the cracked pitcher that goes oftenest to the well. Meanwhile, the youngest daughter grew up and became, a mo and became a most beautiful as well as most remarkably clever girl. And many handsome wealthy prince from distant lands came to ask for her fair hand. But the old king did not forget the bitter experience he had with his two elder girls. I have only one daughter left with a whole heart, and hers is also of glass. Therefore, if I give her in marriage to anyone, it must be a king who is at the same time a glazer, and who understands how to treat an article so fragile, so that, in case of accident, he will know how to revet the cracks. Unfortunately, none of the young princes and nobles who had come as suitors to the princess knew anything at all about how to revet broken glass, and were none of them glazers by profession, so they had to return to their native lands, miserable and disappointed lovers. Among the royal pages in the palace was one whose term as page was shortly to expire. He had still to carry the trains of the youngest princess three times, and after that he was to be promoted to a full-blown courtier. On first occasion, where the page had to carry the young prince's train, she glanced at him and as their eyes met she blushed. When he next carried her train, she waved her hand at him at parting and the unfortunate youth was unable to sleep the whole of the night in consequence. The third time the youth fellow bore the prince's train, the king came forward to meet them halfway and dismissed the page, saying, you have done your duty now, young man, and you may go. I thank you and have also to congratulate you on your promotion. With that the king turned and walked away, whilst the princess bent forward to where the page stood and said, You carried my train so beautifully, better than anyone else. Oh, why are you not a king or a glacier? The unfortunate young man felt so confused as well as delighted that he was unable to utter a word in reply. He managed, however, to make a very graceful and polite bow. When the princess had left him, he ran as hard as he could to the nearest glacier and asked him whether he was in need of a foreman. Yes, replied the other, but you will have to work four years with me before you can be foreman. At first you must sort the arranged boy and go to the baker to fetch my bread, and also look after my children, wash them and dress them. Secondly, you must learn how to putty the cracks. Thirdly, you will have to learn how to cut the glass and fix the windows. And after that, in the fourth year, you shall be foreman. The page thought this would take rather too long, 
So he asked the glacier whether he could not possibly begin with cutting the glass and fixing the windows, and leave out the rest so as to get on quicker. But the glacier shook his head and assured the young fellow that every good glacier had to begin his career from the beginning, or he could never be clever. So the page was obliged to reconcile himself to his fate. The whole of the first year the unfortunate young courtier spent his time in running to the bakers for bread for his master and in washing and dressing his children. In the second year he did nothing but to stop cracks with putty. In the third year he learned how to cut glass and fix windows. And at last, at the commencement of the fourth year, he was a foreman. After having been foreman for a whole year, he took leave of his master and, dressing himself up once more in his court dress, he walked along the roads in deep thought, wondering how he could possibly become a king. As he was walking, a man came towards him, and, seeing that the young courtier was in deep thought, he stopped him and asked him whether he had lost anything. Well, I don't know whether I have exactly lost anything, but at any rate, I cannot find what I want. And what is that? A kingdom. I am wondering how on earth I can become a king. Well, if you had been a glacier, said the stranger, I might have helped you. That is just exactly what I am exclaimed the other. I have only lately been foreman to a glacier. Then you have nothing to fear. You are no doubt aware that our king decided some time ago to give his youngest daughter in marriage to a glacier, who was to be able at the same time a king or, at any rate, a prince. But as they have been unsuccessful in finding such a person, the king has been reluctantly obliged to modify his demands by adding two other conditions. The bridegroom must in any case be a glacier. That of course goes without saying. But what are the other two conditions? asked the young courtier excitedly. The first condition is that he should please the princess. And the second is that he should be a nobleman by birth. There have already been a great number of glaciers applying at the palace, but not only one of them took the princess fancy and all of them had Corais rough hands like those of the commonest glacier. When our young courtier heard these words, he jumped three times about a yard above the road for very joy and then, running around, rather held the skelter back to the town and presented himself at the palace in less than no time. The king at once ordered the princess to be called and when she arrived, he asked whether this young glacier took her fancy. The princess glanced at the young man and, recognizing him at once, she blushed and said, Oh, yes. The king ordered the young fellow to take off his gloves and show his hands, so that they should know whether he was noble of birth. However, the princess said it was quite unnecessary for the young man to do anything of this kind, as she felt perfectly certain that there was no doubt whether about his being of noble birth, and that his hands, she was sure, would be as white as those of a prince. So they were married, and as the young prince's husband was a glacier by profession, as well as a nobleman by birth, he understood how to treat a heart so delicate and fragile as hers. Therefore, she lived blissfully to the end of her days without any accident happening. The king's second daughter, with her cracked heart, had the pleasure of being an aunt, and very excellent aunt she made too. She taught the little princesses to read and write and make dresses for her dolls. She also took a great interest in the little prince's lessons, and when he knew them well and had good marks, like a good little boy, Then she would praise him and make him all sorts of pretty presents, and he would leave her looking red and rosy and flushed with delight. When on the contrary he did not know his lessons and his marks were anything but good, then she would be very different, and he would leave her looking also very red and very rosy, very flushed, but not with delight. This princess lived to a very old age, notwithstanding that her heart was cracked, and if anyone ever marveled at her living so long, she would answer to them as she had done to her parents once before. Remember, it's the cracked picture that goes oftenest to the well. So, that was the story. I hope that this is fun for you. Of course, this is not a modern story or anything, so it might be a bit doubtful at times, but I think it has a good meaning at the end with the first one of them not becoming a mother and being the super typical princess kind of thing, but living a happy life without children and without a man, which I think is a great lesson to take from this. And also that only because you've been hurt or broken, this doesn't mean that your life is over. So I think this is what we should take of this little story. If you like that kind of format, 
I plan on doing way more. I had a lot of fun creating it and I hope you had too. We will see each other in my next video. Bye!